Frank Herbert's seminal science fiction work, the Hugo and Nebula award-winning Dune, has become not only a classic of the genre, but is generally considered to be one of the greatest science fiction novels of all time. This status was confirmed again in a recent poll of the top five science fiction books, as chosen by New Scientist readers. Dune came first, some 45 years after its publication. To say that Herbert's work is important would be an understatement, but it is also fair to mention that for whatever reason, Dune in particular is a novel that, when discussed within the context of science fiction criticism, is often highly praised and held up as a work of merit, albeit briefly. It is then subsequently overlooked when it comes to the critical study of the genre, whereas the remainder of Herbert's works are often ignored altogether. I believe that this has got a great deal to do with both Dune's length and complexity. When it has been scrutinised, Dune is often viewed as a singular entity, rather than the first part of a story so huge in scale, it actually dwarfs the only work to which it is normally compared. Arthur C. Clarke's much-quoted selling line for Dune illustrates this fact, when he says the novel is unique amongst science fiction novels in the depth of its characterization and the extraordinary detail of the world it creates. I know nothing comparable to it except The Lord of the Rings. Herbert, together with Robert A. Heinlein, Isaac Asimov and Arthur C. Clarke, were notable as the big four writers to emerge out of the magazine era, most having started their science fiction writing careers in Astounding Magazine. They became fully-fledged authors in their own right, commanding huge advances on their novels and setting themselves apart in both quality of writing and sales. They are what Brian Aldous sees as representing the fundamental success of science fiction as a literary genre in the 20th century, breaking away from the magazine establishment and becoming household names. Ask anyone vaguely acquainted with science fiction to name four modern writers, and it's likely that the answer will be Asimov, Clark, Heinlein and Herbert. These writers form what we might see as a science fiction super league. Advances for their books are in six, often seven figures. Frank Herbert was born on the 8th of October, 1920, at St. Joseph's Hospital in Tacoma, Washington. The son of Frank Herbert Sr., usually known as F.H., and his wife Eileen Marie. Frank Herbert Sr. was of German stock, his father Otto having migrated along with his brother, yet another Frank Herbert, to the United States from Bavaria. Otto married a local Kentucky woman called Mary Ellen Stanley and went on to produce a total of six children, Frank Herbert Sr. being his third son and born in December 1893 in Kentucky. Herbert's mother, Eileen Marie, was nicknamed Babe and was a McCarthy of Irish Catholic descent whose family had fled British oppression in the late 19th century, migrating first to Canada and then later to the United States of America. Her father was John A. McCarthy, who was employed as a mining engineer and used to tell young Frank many a tale from his family's history in Ireland. Much about Frank Herbert's upbringing would later influence both his writing career and his philosophical and religious attitudes towards life. In Brian Herbert's very personal and searching biography of his father, Dreamer of Dune, we see how the influence of his Irish aunts not only helped shape his religious attitudes away from Catholicism, but also led to him developing one of the most interesting concepts in his Dune novels. His Irish Catholic maternal aunts, who attempted to force religion on him, became the models for the Bene Gesserit Sisterhood of Dune. It is no accident that the pronunciations of Jesuit and Jesuit are similar, as he envisaged his maternal aunts in the Bene Gesserit of Dune as female Jesuits. The attempted at brainwashing by his aunts, as he later termed it, was performed over the protestations of F.H., who was an agnostic. It was Frank Herbert Sr.'s influence on young Frank's religious upbringing that ultimately had the most influence on him. Although Frank never followed any one particular religion, rather having an eclectic approach and taking the best elements as he saw them from a number of religious and esoteric belief systems. His most famous work, Dune, is riddled with the blending of religions and ideas, ranging from the Buddhist-Islamic Fremen with their Zen Sunni and Zen Sufi axioms, to the cynical atheism and religious manipulation of the Bene Gesserit, who are a combination of the Catholic Jesuit order 
and the philosophy behind Alfred Korzybski's theories on general semantics. Frank's upbringing also brought him into contact with a number of people who had belief systems alternative to the mainstream in America at the time. He knew Coast Salish Indians and also had Nisai friends who had Zen Buddhist beliefs. Frank Herbert Sr. did however instill in his son much of Frank's rebellious nature towards the Catholicism of his mother and her sisters. Again, especially in June, this would have a major influence on Frank, as first and foremost, the majority of the characters in his novels are rebels of some sort or another. These influences of family, faith and an upbringing in Tacoma aside, young Frank Herbert knew sure enough that he wanted to become an author very early on in his life. Although his first full-length novel would not be published until 1956, and having pursued a number of varied careers in his life, young Frank knew in what direction he wanted to go. Oh, I knew what I wanted to do with my life, even when I was quite young. In fact, on my eighth birthday, I told my family, I'm going to be an author. Growing up in Depression-era America, Frank Herbert would see a fair share of hardships in his youth, though his formative years seemed more akin to some reworkings of the stories of Huckleberry Finn. He had learned hunting and woodcraft skills from his uncle Adrian McCarthy, who was by profession a hunter, and it was these skills that would later be enhanced and developed with his relationship with Indian Henry, a ho Indian with whom he would have a long friendship. Young Frank was also an avid fisherman, and it was during his fishing trips that he furnished his love of adventure stories by reading the works of Jules Verne, Edgar Rice Burroughs, and H.G. Wells. In his youth, Frank's main interest, however, lay in two fields, namely that of photography and writing. Both Frank's mother and father were what Brian Herbert described as on and off alcoholics, and their heavy drinking would be the impetus that sent young Frank off and about on prolonged fishing and hunting trips. Frank Herbert Sr., much like his son, had numerous careers, and for most of Frank's youth was a highway patrol officer, before going on to become a salesman and a security guard. He also ventured into the world of business, even at one point running a speakeasy with Babe and another couple, which didn't help with their alcoholism. After giving up on their speakeasy endeavours, Frank Herbert Sr. moved the family to Tacoma, and it was here that young Frank, while on one of his fishing trips, would meet Indian Henry, with whom he became close friends. Henry taught Frank much about fishing and hunting, and they had a firm friendship for over two years. Much of Frank's relationship with Indian Henry and the skills that he taught him would later be used in his novel Soul Catcher, one of his mainstream novels which features a Native American anti-hero who is going to sacrifice a young white male to allow atonement for the sins of the white man upon the Native American peoples. Over the next two years the man, Indian Henry, and my father became fast friends. Henry was a hoe, one of the coast's salish, and lived by himself in an old smokehouse. He semi-adopted Frank, teaching him many of the ways of his people. Frank Herbert himself had a varied number of careers, including those of journalist, jungle survival instructor, cameraman, judo instructor, oyster diver, radio newsreader, and a spell in the US Navy during World War II. He also worked as a speechwriter and publicist for several political campaigns, even though he continually returned to the chosen profession of his youth. As much as some of these occupations influenced his writings, for example, his time in the Seabees and work as a speechwriter, cannot have had anything but a serious influence on his ideas for his first novel, The Dragon in the Sea. It was probably his career as what he called a yellow journalist that had the most influence on his writing, for it would be through researching an article on sand dunes, which ultimately he would never complete, that would in due course take him down nearly six years of varied research that would culminate in the writing of June. The idea came from an article, I was going to do an article, which I never did, about the control of sand dunes. When Frank reached his twenties in 1940, he moved to Salem in Oregon, where he first began working as a reporter and a photographer for the Oregon Statesman, also occasionally fulfilling the roles of copy editor and night editor. It was during this time working for the Oregon Statesman that Frank met his first wife, Flora. They would soon be married in Tacoma before moving on to San Pedro in California 
where he would undertake another journalism job for the Glendale Star. The Second World War at this point encroached on the United States of America, and Frank, along with many others, found himself registering for the draft, in actuality one day before the birth of his first child, Penelope. It was his time in the Navy Seabees where he worked as a rated photographer, which led to both an honourable discharge on medical grounds following an accident, and the seemingly inevitable divorce that accompanied many military careers at the time, by his first wife Flora. Following his discharge, Frank would return to his job at the Oregon Statesman, where slowly at first he began to write again. In 1946, Frank began attending the University of Washington, where he would later meet his second wife and great love of his life, Beverly Ann Stewart, or Bev as she would be known. He would never finish his degree, however, due to the fact that he only took those classes he was interested in, while ignoring those he had no time for. Frank and Bev would get married that very same year, and soon have two children together, both boys, Brian and Bruce. Bev would be both a major inspiration and a source of encouragement for Frank, helping to support him during his early attempts at writing. Frank had previously published a short story in Esquire magazine in 1945. It would not be until some seven years later that he published his first science fiction story. Looking for Something appeared in the magazine Startling Stories and became his first work of science fiction. But it was with his first novel, The Dragon in the Sea, that he made a real impact on the genre. It told the story of the psychological pressures on the small crew of a Hell-class submarine, who fighting in a near-future war, operate behind enemy lines to steal oil. The Dragon in the Sea illustrated Frank's strong interest in Jungian psychology, but would also show the beginnings of his interest in ecological and anti-war themes, which he would continue to develop in many of his later works, but especially in June. Although publishing quite a few short stories in various anthologies over the years, the short story format was never really his medium, and he never made any significant impact in this area. More often than not, Herbert's short stories would often provide the seed that he would develop later and allow to germinate into a novel. A good example of this being Green Slaves, published in 1965, but would become another one of his ecologically driven novels, The Green Brain, published the following year. June was first serialised in Analogue, appearing in December 1963 to February 1964 as June World, and Prophet of June, the second and third books of the June novel, from January to May in 1965. June World's appearance also coincided with a colour cover by John Schoener, who also provided the black and white illustrations for the story. Schoener's artwork would continue to grace Herbert's June series for many years, being the artist whom Frank felt had properly captured the feel of the stories. June was then published in its entirety as a novel that same year, winning the first ever Nebula Award for Best Novel. The following year saw Frank Herbert jointly win the Hugo Award for June, and found the author to be quite prolific, with three novels appearing after magazine serialisations. The Green Brain, Destination Void, and The Eyes of Heisenberg all appeared in 1966. The late 60s saw three more novels, with The Heaven Makers and The Santa Roga Barrier being followed by the second part of the first great June trilogy, June Messiah, in 1969. A number of other books followed in the early 70s, and Frank, due to his newfound success as a novelist, sought new opportunities, including finding work as a lecturer at the University of Washington for a brief period between 1970 and 72, where he taught general studies and interdisciplinary studies. In particular, this period during the early 70s saw him finally end his career as a journalist in order to concentrate on his science fiction writing. The final part of the first great Dune trilogy, Children of Dune, was published in 1976 and was soon followed along with the Dosadi experiment in 1977. The late 70s and early 80s also marked the beginning of a literary partnership with Frank's long-term friend Bill Ransom. This culminated in the Pandora Trilogy, a follow-on from some of Frank's concepts in Destination Void, and consisted of the Jesus Incident, the Lazarus Effect, and the Ascension Factor. God Emperor of Dune, published in 1981, marked the beginning of the Second Great Dune Trilogy, 
which was soon followed by its sequels, Heretics of Dune in 1984 and Chapter House Dune in 1985. The year 1984 also marked the advent of the death of Frank Herbert's second wife, Beverly, whom he had been married to for 38 years. She died after a long battle with cancer, and Frank Herbert included a moving afterward about his wife in the final Dune novel he was to write. Frank Herbert married his third wife, Teresa Shackelford, one of his former literary representatives, in 1985. The following year, Frank Herbert published Man of Two Worlds in collaboration with his son Brian, but was to pass away on the 11th of February 1986, aged 65. He had been undergoing treatment for pancreatic cancer at the time, and died from an embolism following surgery for the disease. The Ascension Factor, the final part of his collaborative Pandora trilogy, was published posthumously, with co-author Bill Ransom having noted that Frank Herbert had completed his parts of the novel before passing away. Frank Herbert's diverse interests and career paths helped inform his work with a vast array of ideas and styles, and it is for this reason that he became one of the biggest selling and most respected of science fiction authors. Dune is still to this day considered one of the finest works of science fiction to be produced, and its influence can be seen not only on the stylistic intentions of the new wave, but also on the new postmodern epic space operas which presently dominate the genre. He was like one of Paul Atreides' motifs, a Janus facing bridge between the Campbellian era of Golden Age science fiction, which he subtly and subversely attacked, and the generation who came after. Like Frank Herbert, it was the New Wave's intent to raise science fiction out of the magazine era gutter it was stagnating in, trying to infuse it with new stylistic modes and literary aspirations. In the history of science fiction, Frank Herbert lies between the so-called golden age of the American magazine era and the mostly but not exclusively British New Wave, the two periods which dominated and defined the genre in the 20th century. <laughs>